And just for reference, today we will be um, reading Psalm 69. That is our psalm for today. Um, it is on page 679 in your um, Red Book of Common Prayer. All right. The hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. We'll continue with our versicle and response. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord and all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise and give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. We'll go ahead and continue on with our psalm, again on page 679 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Save me, O God, for the waters have risen up to my neck. I am sinking in deep mire, and there is no firm ground for my feet. I have come into deep waters, and the torrent washes over me. I have grown weary with my crying. My throat is in flame. My eyes have failed from looking for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. My lying foes who would destroy me are mighty. Must I then give back what I never stole? O oh God, you know my foolishness, and my faults are hidden from you. Let not those who hope in you be put to shame through me, Lord God of hosts. Let not those who seek you be disgraced because of me, O oh God of Israel. Surely, for your sake have I suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up the scorn of those who scorn you have fallen upon me i humbled myself with fasting but that was turned to my reproach i put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them those who sit at the gate murmur against me and the drunkards make song about me but as for me this is my prayer to you at the time you have set O lord in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind and your great compassion turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of mine enemies deliver me. You know my reproach, my shame, and my dishonor. My adversaries are all in your sight. Reproach my broken, has broken my heart, and it cannot be healed. I looked for sympathy, but there was none, for comforters, but I could find no one. They gave me gall to eat, and when I was thirsty, they gave me vinegar to drink. Let the table before me be a trap, and their sacred feasts a snare. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and give them continual trembling in their loins. Pour out your indignation upon them, and let the fierceness of your anger overtake them. Let their camp be desolate, and let there be none to dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom you have stricken, and add to the pain of those who you, whom you have pierced. 
Lay to their charge guilt upon guilt, and let them not receive your vindication. Let them be wiped out of the book of the living, and not be written among the righteous. As for me, I am afflicted and in pain. Your help, O God, will lift me on high. I will praise the name of God in song. I will proclaim his greatness with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an offering of oxen, more than the bullocks with horns and hooves. The afflicted shall see and be glad. You who see God, your heart shall live. For the Lord listens to the needy, and his prisoners he does not despise. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and all that moves in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. They shall live there and have it in possession. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell therein. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We'll go ahead and continue with our Old Testament lesson. So this is a reading, for, reading from Ecclesiastes 11, beginning with verse 9. Rejoice, young man, while you are young, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Follow the inclination of your heart and the desires of your eyes, but know that for all these things God will bring you into judgment. Banish anxiety from your mind, and put away pain from your body, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. Remember you are your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them, before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened, and the clouds return with the rain. On the day when the guards of the house tremble, and the strong men are bent, and the women who grind cease working because they are few, and those who look through the windows see dimly, when the doors on the street are shut, and the sound of the grinding is low, and one rises up at the sound of a bird, and all the daughters of song are brought low, when one is afraid of heights, and terrors are in the world, the almond trees blossom, the grasshopper drags itself along, and desire fails. Because all must go their eternal home, and the mourners will go about the streets. Before the silver cord is snapped, and the golden bowl is broken, and the pitcher is broken at the fountain, and the wheel broken at the cistern, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the breath returns to God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. All is vanity. Besides being wise, the teacher also taught the people knowledge, weighing and studying, and arranging many proverbs. The teacher sought to find pleasing words, and he wrote of words of truth plainly. The sayings of the wise are like goads, and like nails firmly fixed are the collected sayings that are given by one shepherd. Of anything beyond these, my child, beware. Of making many books there is no end, and much study is in weariness of the flesh. The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments, for that is holy, the whole duty of everyone. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our response... Um, to their lesson today is going to be Canticle 10, the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion and to our God for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have pur proposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
we'll go ahead and continue with our gospel reading for the day. A reading from St. Matthew beginning with the 16th, in the 16th chapter beginning with verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit then if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels and the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, lately when I've been leading morning prayer, I've been asking each of us to um, follow on a meditation. Um, and so that's what I'm going to ask of everyone today. Um, and it's similar to other ones that I've put it forth in the past in that I want us to take a couple of things um, that may have happened or that we're going to do and I want us to ask ourselves again, um, where can we find Christ in that? And I always repeat that message um, because I'm, I think it's easy for us to go through and to do things and to sometimes even hold ourselves back from opportunities or from um, maybe helping someone else or reaching out to others, um, whether it be because we're afraid. Um, we don't know how someone will respond to us. Um, sometimes we do things out of our own selfishness, um, where and maybe instead of helping another, um, we decide not to. We choose to go a different route for ourselves. Um, really, though, take things that we are doing in everyday life, and especially going forward into the weekend and contemplating over our new week that's going to begin on Monday. I want us to maybe see where we have been a Peter before, where um, our fear has held us back or has made us second guess something. Um, maybe where our fear of losing something is greater than the end. And in this case, it's really when, you know, Christ died for the cross for us. He gave up his life for us. Um, just like Jesus said, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And I think that that's obviously very easy for us to do. We get caught up in all of our own issues, our own problems, our own um, disagreements or whatnot. And instead i want us to reflect on some things going into the next week of how we can focus on christ and how we can focus on bringing him into our lives and on maybe taking things that we're afraid of doing and um, actually doing them striving for them and not just doing them for ourselves but seeing how um, we can do that to spread the gospel, to spread the word of Christ. Um, again, in the end, that's what we're here for. We're here to share the gospel. We're here to share what Jesus has done for us. And um, I preached a little bit about it before. Um, 
being afraid of things, being afraid of repenting, maybe being afraid of reaching out to other people. Um, but we do have to live our life trying not to be afraid of things, trying to actually putting our trust in Christ, in God, that we are meant to be doing something greater, that we are meant to um, be bringing people in to see God's love and the love that he has for us and the love that we should have for each other. Um, it's very easy for us to get distracted by that. And I think that, um, especially in these turbulent and times when there's just so much unknown, um, when we might be missing out on our church family or our church, we have that fear that might be holding us back and maybe it's training anger or anxiety or um, whatever it may be. Um, but really, again, going into our weeks, going into everything we do and how we can Christ-center it, um, how we can continue to move forward and help each other and love each other and really um, being an example and setting an example so people can know and can feel Christ's love through whatever we do, do. Um, whether it be going to work, whether it be checking in on each other, um, whether it be saying a little prayer for each other. Um, we can all recenter our lives and really understand that Christ died for us. Christ had so much love for us that um, he took away our sins. He's forgiving, he's merciful, he's compassionate. And we have to remember to find those things inside of us um, and try to exemplify the same. Try to be the same way, even if it's really hard to move on from that. And so that's kind of my little meditation for everyone for the day. Um, set an example and be Christ's love to others in your life. Um, don't let fear or anxiety or worry hold you back. We're going to go ahead and continue um, with the Apostles' Creed for today. And that's going to be on page 96 of the Red Book of Common Prayer. And so if you'll join me together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, he was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we'll continue with the prayers on page 97. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in tempta into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we'll continue on page 98 with Suffrage B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. 
to our collect of the day. O oh God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that by your inspiration we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, for and ever, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that you are ever walking, that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to go ahead and... Um, Take a moment to pray for our own needs and for those of others. And if you'll join me in saying the general thanksgiving, page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, <clears throat> Sorry. We, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that we, with truly thankful hearts, may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Almighty God, you have given this grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. I hope you will join us on um, tomorrow for morning prayer. Um, that one should be on YouTube live again. I really apologize. Um, I had to use Facebook Live today. Um, we'll go ahead and put this on the YouTube as well. Um, but I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend, and I hope um, that we can all spread Christ's love and check in on each other and go into the weekend with knowing that he'll provide for us and that there's nothing we have to worry about. So have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.